I want to give credit to to the writers for giving a platform uh, to document an issue that is so prevalent. You know, this year there's over six million Americans living with this disease, over 11 million caregivers providing care. And, and the, this is us family. You have a family that took charge and they said, we have to, we have to plan. And Rebecca is the, once she was diagnosed, she had a meeting with her family and she said, I have time to plan for my own future care. So I'm going to make the decisions now, and this is how I want it to go. One of the reasons why we tell families, if your loved one is in the early stages of the disease, this is the time to plan for the future care with their input. The Rebecca's family members could not agree a lot of the times on, on the treatment for their mother. How, how common is that? that? That is very common. Our association offers care consultations where we can help families plan for how to have those difficult conversations with other family members. It's not easy. It's, it's a terrible disease, but families need to understand they don't have to do this alone. Can the Alzheimer's Association help uh, families uh, mediate some of this? Yes, uh, we actually are, due to the, the pandemic, we have been hosting um, care consultations virtually. Um, it's common to have a virtual meeting with families of, of five, 10 or more from around the country. It, it really is it, very important to provide families with the information that they need about the disease process and what can be put in place in terms of providing support for, for the person. The sad thing is there is no cure for Alzheimer's. And I know there's a lot of research underway looking for a cure and, and also looking for ways to prevent it before it starts. Can you talk about that a little bit, the reasons to be hopeful? Right. Uh, so this is really an exciting time in, in, in the field right now. We're seeing a number of medications that are in late stage clinical trials, which you'll be hearing more about them in the next two to three years. Um, so that's a positive. We're also seeing a lot of the development of new diagnostic tools that will help identify folks that are in the early stages of the disease. So once diagnosed with Alzheimer's, if that individual, for example, manages their chronic conditions, they're ahead of the game. They can lower their risk for other complications later in life. We have posted a link to the Alzheimer's Association website for patients and caregivers. They also have a free helpline at 1-800-272-3900 with information on support groups and education programs, both in person and online. You can just head to NBCWashington.com.